Trachis piercings, aftercare instructions, how to heal a trachis piercing. Coming up next on Aftercare Instructions by a Piercer, episode number three. So stick around. Those are new to the channel, my name is Dave Ho. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio, located right here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So, when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking about a level of expertise that comes with being in the body piercing industry for well over 26 years. For those who follow the channel, you might find it a little strange that this is episode number three. Well, I started doing these way back in April, and then the pandemic happened, and everything kind of went weird. So, uh, I'm doing this, uh, we're recording this, and this is important. December 28th of 2020, if you've gotten conflicting ideas, methods, etc. from your piercer, Talk to them about it. Things change, information becomes available, and who knows? This may all be wrong by then, especially if you're checking this and watching this in the future. This is why I tend to redo these occasionally. So what we're going to talk about today is healing out a trachis piercing. For those that don't know, a trachis piercing is located there on the front of the ear. It's through what, what it's called your trachis. It's that flap of cartilage that you can kind of block up your ear canal with. First off, ear piercer should have given you something that kind of looks like this or is equivalent to this. This is a uh, written aftercare instructions. They should include the type of jewelry they use, uh, the size, the material, when it was done, who did it, and they should have contact information along with all these written instructions on how to take care of it. I even include a shopping list just to make things really easy. The other thing you're going to need is sterile saline solution. Most common or easy to find, or what I generally suggest and sell, is Nelbed. This stuff. This stuff is great because it comes out in a mist. So you can basically just spray it directly on the piercing. This stuff, it comes out in a spray and it'll take your eye out. So if you don't want to shoot your eye out, get this stuff. If you can't find this stuff, the piercing aftercare, this stuff, then you got to do this uh, using these a little bit different. So here's what you do. With the mist, the piercing aftercare spray, just spray it directly onto the area, let it stay in contact for roughly about 5 to 10 minutes, and then either rinse it under running water or dab it dry, kind of wipe off any can, anything that comes loose. Don't use Q-tips. Don't use cotton tip applicators. Don't use anything that has little strands coming off of it. If you ended up with the spray kind that comes out and you could take an eye out with it, and it doesn't mist, then I would suggest that you take a clean paper towel or a sterile piece of God sponge, saturate it, and then apply it to the area for roughly about the same amount of time. Also, wipe it clean or uh, rinse under running water. This and everything else I'm going to go over should be done twice daily uh, for at least the next eight weeks or until you stop seeing discharge on the ring or jewelry and the piercing holes will start to get this indented or ingrown look to it. If it seems healed to you but you're unsure, I highly suggest seeing your piercer and having them take a look at it to decide whether or not it's healed or not or if you need to give it additional time. That's why we're here. We're here for support. Next up is things mom should have taught you. Cross-contamination prevention. Common sense stuff. Wash your hands before you handle it. Try to handle it by the ends wherever possible or the ball. The only time you really need to have any contact with this piercing is when you are doing the cleaning with the saline. And if it has threaded jewelry, checking the tightness of the end occasionally. Uh, with threaded jewelry, it can loosen in some cases over time, and they can fall off. They usually fall off at the worst possible time and land in the most disgusting thing near you. You don't need to get out Loctite. You don't need to buy pliers and crank that thing on as tight as possible. You just need to check them occasionally. Uh, usually, if it's a good quality piece of jewelry, it takes a number of turns for them to loosen or tighten. 
no oral contact or exchange of bodily fluids on you around the piercing. That does include your own saliva. I've never understood why people lick their fingers and clean things. Please don't do that. It's disgusting. Keep your environment clean. Clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with the piercing needs to be changed or cleaned on a regular basis. A wedding around constantly changing your pillow case, get a nice, soft, comfortable T-shirt, uh, put it over the pillow, sleep on one side, sleep on the other side, flip it inside out, sleep on one side, sleep on the other side. That way you get about four nights out of it. The other thing is do not sleep directly on the piercing. Make sure you're sleeping on your back or your other side. If you absolutely have to sleep on that side, you need to figure out a way to isolate the piercing and keep it elevated off the bedding. A way to do that would be using a U-shaped travel pillow. Uh, if you sleep with your ear in the center, it kind of eliminates all that contact. Uh, another way to do that is take a clean, fluffy bath towel, roll it up. I did the thing. Too early, and then uh, put it in the shape of a uh, donut and sleep your ear in the center of the donut. I've also had clients use hemorrhoid pillows. Do not submerge the piercing in bodies of water you cannot control the quality of, which is everything but your own cleaned and well maintained bathtub. Meaning, no swimming. You can't submerge the piercing in lakes, rivers, streams, ocean, ponds. Puddles in the Walmart parking lot, uh, car washes, water parks, kiddie pools. No, you can't. I don't care what you cover it with. I don't care how long you're going to be in there, what have you. You are risking contamination of that piercing and infection every time you do that. Keep pets away from it. Do not let them sleep in the bed with you, especially if they're small animals that like to sleep up by your face or attracted to shiny objects and steal your breath while you're sleeping. Because they do. My grandmother didn't lie about that. <laughs> Avoid contact with unclean objects. With this piercing, because of its location, you do have to be concerned about using telephones, headphones, earbuds, stethoscopes, anything that comes in contact with a piercing needs to be disinfected and cleaned on a regular basis. You should also be concerned that uh, pathogens, uh, microorganisms, do move on the surface of your skin. So it's not just the direct area, it's the general area. You should clean clothing, bedding, etc., anything that comes in contact with it on a regular basis um, and avoid contact whenever possible. This also includes hair. Make sure that your hair is dry before it comes in contact with it. Make sure you rinse off any type of uh, conditioners or anything else you put in your hair before you allow contact with the piercing. With earbuds and stethoscopes and et cetera, I understand that some of the some of you, either for uh, you know personal reasons or for uh, professional reasons, cannot not use them. Um, I really suggest Lebray style jewelry with a flat disc on the back. And waiting until it is healed, so do plan on not be able to use those for at least 12 months or just do the one ear in. Do not share them with anybody. Even after it heals, you shouldn't because that's gross. Um, and once you have gone through the healing process and everything else, test it. Try it for a few minutes, see how it feels. If it doesn't feel good, you probably shouldn't use them. You're going to have to go over over the ear or something else that doesn't have that amount of pressure on the piercing. Sorry. Or take the jewelry out. Abandon the piercing. That moves us on to jewelry. Uh, leave the initial piece in until it's completely healed. It is probably, if it's a post-style piece of jewelry, it's probably too big than uh, the amount of tissue that the thickness of your trachis is. However, uh, you do need to leave that in there to allow for inflammation and swelling. If it's constantly getting caught on things and actually causing trauma and problems, uh, it's possible to go to a shorter one before it's completely healed. I really suggest that if you do do that, that you let a professional change the jewelry for you. They're probably going to do it with less trauma than you're going to do at home. They can be kind of complicated and difficult to change. Once a piercing is healed, you should always go to shorter jewelry or uh, avoid loose jewelry. Something that's snug is going to Feel better. It's going to be less likely to get caught on things. And back to the earbud thing, it's going to make it easier to put things inside your ear canal or the entrance anyway. You don't want to put it all the way down there. You don't want to hurt yourself. Yeah. 
if you're going to go with a ring, let's say you healed out with a stud and you decide you need to go to, you want to go for a ring, it does need to be oversized so that the area that's inside the piercing is flat as possible. If you put a ring in there and it is super small and that arch is really, really tight, it's going to add a lot of pressure and abuse to the area. It's going to kind of create hot spots on both sides. And this could cause a healed piercing to suddenly just flare up, have bumps, etc. So whenever in doubt, see your piercer, have them size it for you, and understand that that's why a larger ring is needed. If you need the starter, you know, smaller profile, or you want something more dainty, I really suggest just sticking with stud-style jewelry. Abuse. One, do you think it's constrictive, abrasive, or blocks the flow of oxygen in the piercing? Be careful with ear muffs, headphones, etc. I know I've gone over this about 50 times, but it's very important to keep things away from it. Also, don't use harsh... Arse cleaners and ointments and et cetera. That would be things like Bactine, antibacterial soap, uh, except when it's been contaminated, which I'll get to next. Uh, antibacterial creams, salves, et cetera, like Bacitrace and zinc, Neosporin. Uh, don't use Listerine on it, rubbing alcohol, witch hazel, Provodine iodine or Betadine, uh, Hibiclins. All that stuff is really just too harsh and unnecessary with ointments especially petroleum-based ointments it tends to block up the piercing and not allow it to discharge properly while creating a wonderfully uh, attractive petroleum smear that collects dirt debris and everything else if you have a problem see your piercer don't try to self-medicate um, with whatever's in the the medicine cabinet now if you do know that you've made a mistake and you've contaminated it for whatever reason, you, and you're human, you make mistakes. Uh, what you want to do is jump in uh, or rinse the area off with uh, running water and take a good, mild antibacterial liquid soap is best, something that doesn't contain a lot of moisturizers, fragrances, or other additives. Um, if you can't find that, just regular hand soap uh, should be okay. Squirt a uh, pearl drop in the palm of your hand, lather it up well so you're diluting it, gently apply it to the piercing area, let it stay in contact for roughly about 30 seconds, then rinse under running water. This should only be done if you know that you've contaminated the area. Otherwise, it's completely unnecessary as, uh, with all that other garbage I talked about earlier. I know we used to tell people to do this all the time. Uh, our, our knowledge has changed. It's just not necessary, and it's just too often causes additional problems. Now, let's talk about do you have you have a problem. What should you do? Contact your piercer. Go see them. Have them take a look at it. Or go to a professional medical person. Don't go to the Internet and come up with 50 home remedies to solve your problem. Usually, most of these may work for one person, or maybe a handful of people, but they may not be the right option for you. Don't start smearing things all over the piercing, like tea tree oil, emu oil, uh, aspirin paste, and all ex all this stuff. It can cause the issue to worsen or just flat out not work. See your piercer, have them figure out what's going on, and they will be happy to help you through the process of fixing the issue. Now, it's not uncommon to see some signs of infection like discomfort, discolorization, heat, tenderness to touch, inflammation, or swelling off and on anywhere from three to five days. It's not uncommon also to see a little bit of slight bleeding. Usually, this collects around the piercing holes. Most people do not even notice it. Now, if any of those things occur after the first week or two, you should contact your piercer. Well, that's all I have to say on how to heal a trachis piercing. Um, if you uh, found this edifying, enjoyable, or helpful, give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you liked it because we like it when you like it. If uh, you haven't subscribed, hit the subscription thing and, and then just punch that, that notification bell so that you're notified every single time that we post a video. If you like merch, you like uh, swag, you like uh, you like pretty things, and you like tattoos and piercings, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. Lots of designs, lots of colors, lots of different products. If I brought up a subject or you have a question about something, please leave a comment. I usually answer them when I have time. And until next time.
Here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, hey, I hope to see you for your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you for watching the video. I uh, hope you're having a wonderful day, and we'll see you in the next video.